Joe Biden may be fighting to hold on to the power, but some on the left have seen enough and they want to commit political euthanasia. I have to be the only one to stand up for Joe Biden here to protect him from the cruelest form of elder abuse I've ever been forced to watch. Well, then that's what I'll do. He was in epic distress that Thursday night. Every cognitive default in his mind seemed to be shutting down. If this had been somebody that you truly cared about, loved, embraced, what would you have done? Now, who's the victim of elder abuse? Is it Joe or is it us, the American people? Dr. Jill Biden's reportedly the fiercest advocate for her husband staying in. Why? I think Jill would like to see him stay. She's having a good time. I notice she's really seems to be having a good time. And I, I'm hearing that Hunter is calling the shots. So this isn't necessarily a very positive thing for our country. Editorial boards across the country are begging Dr. Jill to pull the plug. But the Bidens don't listen to the press. They don't even talk to them. Biden thought the press was unfair while they were covering up for him. Joe was forced out of a presidential campaign before. He doesn't want to cave again. Plus, you can't beat the perks. Jill Biden likes being first lady so much, she reportedly has her own Hail to the Chief style entrance theme song that she makes the Marine Corps band play for her. Plus, school's out for summer, so Jill isn't teaching. She's traveling. Gets to campaign for her husband and fly around on nice jets. Tevin McCarthy revealing that Dr. Jill would often sit in on high-level meetings. Jill doesn't want to leave either. Many times when we had meetings in the Oval Office, Jill was there as well. Interesting. Wait, so the First Lady was in some of your meetings about policy? Many times Jill would come wow. in. There was one time when I'd sit there and, and the president said something on the, in this famous tour down to the pool saying, do you want to go, do you want to go outside? Jill turns very quickly when he hears that, when she hears that and says, no, they don't want to go outside because she knew exactly what position he was in and what he was doing. And then he just turns around. You don't want to go outside? And then let us outside. Many times, I don't think she's there for policy. I think she's there to give him comfort and direct the meetings. Former Jill Biden press secretary, Michael LaRosa, is back. All right, Mike, before we get to Dr. Jill. Hi, Jesse. Is, is Hunter yeah. really calling the shots? Well, I doubt he's calling the shots, but, you know, I have to say... Um, Hunter has, you know, he has pretty good media uh, savvy instincts of his own. He you does. Know? I, I guess the answer, <laughs> the answer to that would be where, where's Jim Comer today? I mean, it was, it was really Hunter who beat back House Republicans on his own. Uh, it was not with no help from the White House or, or the campaign. That's for sure. He was kind of left without any cover or air support. Um, and, you know, he pulled sort of some Trumpian moves. He came out there. He was confrontational, used the element of surprise, directly communicated and uh, sort of was able to manipulate the media to win the coverage at the end of the day and shape some of the narrative. So, look, uh, you say what you want about uh, right. uh, Hunter. Well, Mike, and, Mike and, he's and also life, was, but, he was also convicted good. of felony gun charges and is facing tax felonies in a trial in September. I'm not sure he's as savvy as. You say so he is, is, but tell so me more. So is the nominee, though. So right. is the nominee. Right. <laughs> tell me a little bit about Dr. Jill. We don't know her the yeah. way you know Dr. Jill. She apparently is telling Joe stay in and isn't listening to the press or anyone at all. Why? No. So one thing that was so interesting about the George Stephanopoulos interview when he said that if if we lose, he will have given it his all, and he got a lot of uh, flack for that, right? It reminded me so much of what happened in 87, because as soon as he dropped out that same day, he was going into a hearing to chair the Bork hearings. And this really was going to be like the next step for political rehab for him. Well, Jill was with him in the ante room, and she heard him say something very similar, like, well, at least I can go focus on this hearing now. And she cut him off and took him by the shoulders and just kind of told by the lapels and said, no, you have to go. I think win. 
And uh, because she knew that was sort of a rehabilitation moment for him. And, you know, they were driven from that campaign. And I think they learned a long time ago they were not going to let blind quotes or polls or pundits really push them out ever again. And I think that 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 moment was scarring for them, Jesse. You know, that he, she had never seen his character, his integrity attacked before. Um, he had been groomed to run for president for 15 years. He was our next, he was a, a great rising hope. And um, that the way that campaign ended was pretty devastating for them, but it was a huge learning lesson. Uh, in sort of political combat. You heard. And, you know, she's from Philly, like you, so she likes to fight. Yeah, you know, we love to fight. We like to scrap. And we'll just do it for fun. We <laughs> yeah. don't even care. Do, do, did you hear Michael Moore at the top accuse Dr. Jill Biden of elder abuse? What would Dr. Jill say to I that? Did. What she would say is that she hates politics, but she loves him. And he never got in the way of her career. She wasn't going to get in the way of his. They just never did that with their both of their aspirations. It just wasn't. It, it's not a Leave It to Beaver 1950s, you know, comedy for them. It's they're pretty independent. They left. They lived independent professional lives uh, outside of each other's shadows. So she would never. She would probably not. This is his decision. You know, she Jill and the advisors and his sister and his family are probably there and. Um, giving advice. But Jill alone won't make this decision. And I don't know if Democrats really want her to be making the decision for the party. And I don't think she would want that decision. I don't think she's comfortable with it. So she's not going to advise him out of anything. She's just going to support whatever he wants. And we know Joe wants to win. We know he might lose, but he wants to stay in. That's right. All right. Mike, great That's right. to it's see gonna you. It's going to have to be a, a pretty compelling case. It's got to be compelling. There might have to be a whistleblower. I don't know if you heard about rumors of a whistleblower that could come in any day. Thanks, Mike. You're, you're welcome. Thanks. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.